Mikey Evans from Aston shared your your going live. Right. We're live now as we speak. We have Instagram open. I got Lips and Val and Megan over on. Uh, uh, we got. All right, we got Miss Mitchell over on uh, Instagram. We've also got Tactical Homeland over here. Uh, Facebook, we are live, but we have nobody following on Facebook, so we're going to get moving along here. All right, behind me. Can we see this gentleman here looking at his phone? All right, this is Scott Price. I'm a little far away from my things, Quacker Tracker decoys on Instagram. I got uh, I'm having a hard time seeing, guys. We got the, we got the laptop and the phone set up on Instagram, phone on Instagram, laptop on Facebook Live. Um, we're in the shed, as you can see. I've got Scotty Price here over my left shoulder. I think it's left on all of everybody's computers and videos. It might be backwards. I don't even know. Anyway, Scotty Price and I have known each other probably, what, since 87 or 88? Long time. Um, a lot of you guys that follow along here actually know Scotty. Uh, he's, how long have you been volunteer fire and EMS? 30 years. 30 plus, easy, right? Yeah, uh, long time here in the town. Yep, he's with Media uh, Borough uh, Fire Company number 23. Um, hold up, babe. Yo, come on in real quick. All right. What's your question? Yes, it's in the, it's in the kitchen. I put it in the kitchen. All right. Um, anyways, I'm on. This would have been the 14th day of being sick. I'm 36 hours removed from everything. And so is the uh, oldest there who just came in. So hopefully we're back to normal. And uh, one more night here. Hopefully the doctor will give me clearance to go back to work tomorrow. So I will check in with them. So it looks like I am somewhat back. Uh, it feels good to actually be normal and sleep throughout the whole night. Uh, Scotty was worried about uh, coming over because, like I said, it was almost a 13-day plague over here for me. It was the... Well, it was bad. Uh, cut, trying to cut the grass. To, yeah, I know. I hear you. <laughs> trying to cut the grass today was uh, it, it. Man, the energy just killed me. But anyways, back to Scott. I said he's been volunteer fire EMS with Media Fire Company. We've known each other since mid to late '80s when we were both in high school. Uh, Scotty's mom actually welcomed me back from the first Gulf War at the school where she was a librarian, um, and that was Glenwood El yes. Glenwood Elementary of the Rose Tree Media School District. Um, one of the neatest things I ever did in my life, I got to go in front of the whole elementary and uh, it was really one of the coolest things in the world. So, like I said, I've known Scotty for a while. He's been wanting to come over for a live toast. It's going to be somewhat long, so if you can stick with me, stick with me. There's a story here for a young man out of Jim Thorpe, PA, that I think is going to blow people's minds. And this is what, this is why, um, this is why I do this every week. All right. I got a request last night to do uh, a local trooper who was killed uh, four years ago uh, on today's date. So stick with me here. I'm going to try and read through these things. I'm trying to stay on both cameras. Uh, if I pop off, I apologize. Facebook's got the water lens. The Instagram sticks you with this little tiny thing over here. If you're on Instagram, you know what I mean. Uh, thank you very much, my sister from another mother, Chrissy. All right, down there in North Carolina. Craig, you're off the camera for Instagram. Yes, thank you, Lips. It's hard to read. Um, all right, so here we go. We're going to get right into it because uh, Mrs. Nolan's poor house over here has got dinner on the table. The girls are on swings, and we want to try and get it done. All right, so here we go. First day of coffee back since the 18th, I think, as well. Man, coffee tastes so good, finally. Nothing but the best, right, Nolan's oh, poor house. They drink in the, I'm drinking the Nolan's poor house house blend because, well... It's, it's an easy drinking coffee, so over my shoulders, and I'll keep blocking them out here, or the, the storyboards or the, the hero boards, whatever we want to call them. I will take pictures of them later. All right. I have notes I'm going to read here as well, so stick with me. I apologize. Uh, it seems to be I'm caught up on all the comments here, at least on Instagram. Facebook people are just here, and Scotty's actually monitoring, so if you have questions, fire away, and Scotty will try and monitor that for me. All right, so four years ago, today's date, September 30th, 2014, uh, Trooper David Kedra, Pennsylvania State Police, was in a training uh, facility in Montgomery County um, when an accidental discharge from a firearm uh, went off. And uh, unfortunately, he succumbed to his injuries from that training. Um, we all know firearm safety is paramount, but 
when you work a dangerous career field, as we all know, things can happen. But this young man was, he, he was only with the, st the state police for just over two years. Um, but, I mean, to get to the Pennsylvania State Police, you're, you're one of the best. I mean, I, all my state trooper friends are going to, their heads are going to swell huge now. And I mean it. Um, the state police and his community were robbed, and his families and friends were robbed of this young man. Um, but I received a request to honor him. Uh, like I said, it was four years ago, uh, this date in 2014. So Trooper Kedra, you are not forgotten, and your family and friends are forever with in all of our thoughts and minds. Uh, we also had four law enforcement officers fall this past week. Um, Two just yesterday in the same incident from um, the Brookhaven Police Department in Mississippi. Uh, again, two young, two young gentlemen. All right. Uh, Patrolman James White and Corporal Zach Moak on the storyboards. Corporal Moak is first, and uh, Patrolman James White. I try to follow rank structures a little bit. Um, they were both shot and killed in front of a home. Uh, they were responding at 5 a.m. in the morning to reported shots fired. Uh, they engaged the shooter and the shooter was wounded and later taken into custody. Uh, but unfortunately, both these young men um, succumbed to their injuries on uh, the 29th of September of this year. Um, Deputy Sheriff uh, Mark Cox, he suffered a fatal heart attack while training, uh, conducting canine training. Uh, he was serving with the Real County Sheriff's Office in Texas. Uh, he fell on September 25th. 2018. And we have Corrections Officer Joseph uh, Paris, or Parisi, I'm sorry if I mispronounced names, uh, from the Minnesota Department of Corrections. He fell on September 24, 2018, also a heart attack. This was a young man, 37 years old. Um, but during the incident in which he had the heart attack, an inmate had assaulted another officer. And during that incident, uh, two other officers were injured during the the incident, but unfortunately, um, corrections officer Parisi fell from a heart attack. And I forgot to mention about uh, Deputy Sheriff Cox. Deputy Sheriff Cox is also a U.S. Navy veteran. Uh, he's been with the Real County Sheriff's Office for three years, and he previously served with the Edwards County Sheriff's Office for five years. Um, he was also a uh, law enforcement officer in Florida prior to all that, and I mean... This is a, you know, lifetime of service for that for that uh, for that sheriff. Um, you know, I don't I don't know what the department was in Florida, but like I said, he, he served many different places. Um, so everywhere he went, he continued to serve his community. All right, now I'm on to my military guys and girls. Uh, Lance Corporal Jeremiah Collins, Jr., from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. U.S. Marine Corps, he was with Combat Logistics Regimental Regiment 2, 2nd Marine Logistics Group, 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force. He fell October 4, 2013, in Helmand Province, Afghanistan, during combat operations. Um, Specialist Angel Lopez, from Parma, Ohio. He fell October 5th, 2013. He was with the 201st Brigade Support Battalion, 3rd Infantry Brigade Combat Team, 1st Infantry Division in Zabu Province, Afghanistan. He was um, killed during a, when his unit was attacked by enemy small arms fire. Next, um, th these guys were the cream of the crop when it comes to our U.S. Army. Sergeant First Class Andrew Weathers of DeRitter, Louisiana. He fell September 30, 2014, 2nd Battalion, 7th Special Forces Group, Airborne, Helmand Province, Afghanistan, when his unit came under fire and he, his wounds were caused by small arms fire. Uh, I mean, Special Forces, these guys are the cream of the crop. And, I mean, Sergeant First Class, those in the military know, um, this is a senior NCO. I mean, you, you just, you can't, it's, it, it, it's horrible to lose your senior NCOs like that. Um, next, we have Sergeant First Class Riley G. Stevens of Tolar, Texas. 
September 28, 2012, 1st Battalion, 3rd Special Forces Group, Airborne in Wardak, Afghanistan. Also, uh, during an ambush with small arms, fire caused his injuries and his uh, death. Uh, again, I mean, these guys creaming a crop. I mean, there's no, no one better. All right. Uh, next, we have, again, another senior NCO. I mean, these guys are, are our leaders for our young troops. Uh, Sergeant First Class Daniel T. Metcalf of Liverpool, New York. He fell September 29, 2012, with the 2nd Battalion, 503rd Infantry Regiment, 173rd Airborne Brigade Combat Team, and Saeed Abad, Afghanistan, also to small arms fire. The next three are all from the same unit, and all from the same same incident. And when I tell you, again, this is our special forces. These guys, you know they were in the thick of it if this happened. We have Captain Richard G. Cliff Jr. of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Sergeant First Class Jamie S. Nichols of Maysell, West Virginia. And Sergeant First Class Gary Vasquez of Round Lake, Illinois. All three of these uh, men were assigned to the 1st Battalion, 7th Special Forces Group. Um, they were killed in the, I'm going to slaughter this town's name, Yakachul, Afghanistan. Um, their vehicle encountered an improvised explosive device, and it took three extremely viable military members from the Army. I mean, anybody knows Green Berets, this is the, the cream of the crop, the top of the line. Let's get a little jumping around here in a second here, right? Next, we have uh, Specialist Christopher uh, Barkowitz. Again, I apologize for names. I'm horrible with names. Uh, September 30th, 2008, he was with the 2nd Battalion, 6th Infantry Regiment, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 1st Armor Division. Small arms fire in Baghdad, Iraq. Let me find my notes here. I'm uh, getting ahead of myself here. Yep, I'm good. Um... Again, his they were on a dismounted patrol when this when they when his unit was attacked uh, by a small group. Um, Staff Sergeant William uh, Hasenflu out of Brayton, Florida, First Squadron, 61st Cavalry Regiment, 4th Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne Division, in the Jaji District, Afghanistan. Um, his unit was also ambushed, and small arms fire caused his death. Um, I'm going to jump to my last two and then I'm going to come back to my middle two. And the reason I'm coming back to the middle two is to stick with me. I, gotta, I should have made my notes better. But um, September 29th, 2003, we have Staff Sergeant Christopher E. Crutchall of McConnellsburg, PA, Delta Troop, 4th Cavalry. Uh, an IED, an improvised explosive device, uh, struck his vehicle. Um, get my notes here. Um, struck his vehicle and uh, he, he fell from that from the injuries from that explosion um, again another Pennsylvania young man and then we have PFC Evan O'Neill of Haverhill Massachusetts September 29 2003 1st Battalion 87th Infantry Regiment 10th Mountain Division in the Shekin Afghanistan his unit was attacked also uh, by a small unit and using small arms fire causing his death. Now the reason I skipped over these middle two here, let me get myself back onto my, my first page I need to be, here we go. I'm going to read you these two guys and there's a little story behind this that this is why I do this every week, alright? So if you're still with me, please stick with me. If you're watching again, come back and watch this segment if you want. But what we have is Sergeant Andrew Joseph Baddock of Jim Thorpe, PA. That's what, hour, 10 uh, minutes? Yeah. About an hour and Very 10 minutes north of us. Not far at all. All right. So again, Sergeant Andrew Joseph Baddock, Jim Thorpe, PA. September 29, 2003. 1st Battalion, 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 82nd Airborne Division. Near the Abu Ghraib prison area of Iraq. And Sergeant Darren K. Potter, 24, of Louisville, Kentucky. He was with the 223rd Military Police Company, Kentucky Army National Guard. These two men were responding with their units to uh, mortar fire 
and when Sergeant Potter's vehicle avoided an incoming round, the vehicle made a sudden movement and from a very high elevated position on a roadway rolled into a canal, a fast water canal. Um, unfortunately, Sergeant Potter drowned, as did Sergeant Baddock, from that maneuver. But here's where the story gets beyond amazing to me. I'm going to refer to my notes, but Sergeant Baddock, there's a long readout. I'll try and put up a link for this if you want. Um, give you a little background on Sergeant Paddock. They called him AJ. I think it's kind of obvious. We look at his name, we all can kind of figure that out. But he loved water. And if you know the Jim Thorpe area, there's a lot of whitewater rafting going on there. Uh, it's, you know, an incredible area. That's, that there's a not a gorge, but... A, it's not the Pennsylvania Gorge, but it's the or Pennsylvania Grand Canyon, but it's it's a beautiful area, and it's a lot of fast water, a lot of kayak and whitewater rapids. And as a young man, this is what he would do. He he was a whitewater kayaker. All right, he worked as a guide on the Lehigh River, taking many of these you know people coming up from the city and even everywhere that wanted to go whitewater rafting and kayaking. He would take them. So he was skilled in new water and was was very skilled on the water. Um, he was also a, a volunteer fireman and an EMS uh, in his hometown there. So this is before he even went in. And one of his, I think it was his teacher, um, I'm trying to, I should have highlighted it. One of it, I think it was his teacher said that all he wanted to do was be a paratrooper. And this, this young man did this. He was a sergeant. He was in his second tour. All right. But I'm going to read to you the account. Right. Right. Baddock was one of the or Baddock was one of the several soldiers in a four vehicle convoy responding to a mortar attack near the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. That day in Baghdad. A heavy vehicle conducting patrols in the area when the mortar began to fire overturned on top of a steep bank as it turned sharply to avoid the impact of an incoming mortar round. So they were under fire. This vehicle went into the swift water and submerged. Well, Sergeant Baddock, instinct took over, and as it often does when officers or soldiers are trained to. I don't know what that just was. Um, God knows what those two kids are doing out there in swing set. But, anyways, fun. Um, so, Sergeant Baddock plunged into the murky water and rescued two military police officers. In the next attempt to rescue the driver, he had already known the driver had passed away, and that was Sergeant Potter. He went back in the water to recover Sergeant Potter. All right? And as they say, truly living the warrior ethos is never leaving a fallen comrade. He went back into the water to recover his fellow soldier. All right? I mean... Think about that. Can you make that decision? I mean, that's a tough one, man. But that I'm only glancing over this because I don't want to tie everybody up and dinner's on the table and I, I know Scotty wants to go home and doesn't want to be near me in case the plague still <laughs> in case the plague is still active. Hopefully I get to clear tomorrow. But this is why we try and do this. This is why we want to tell this story a little bit. Because I mean this young man's an hour and ten minutes north of us, and I mean I had never heard the story. So, I think we need to get uh, get your beverage. I got my coffee. I'll put your uh, mug up in the freezer here, or your glass. All right. You know what? 13, uh, 13 days of the plague? Scotty, should I go for one? I don't know, but it's up to you. I don't want you to either. Well, we'll see. Stand by. I'm going to get one. Yeah, give me that there. There you go. All right. Once again, there's no better way to remember heroes than to speak about them Say their names, think of their families and friends, live our lives as best we can, 
Take care of each other. If I throw up on camera, nobody argue or yell at me. All right, I'm sorry. First beer in probably 14 days. We got Scotty over here. He's going to be doing uh, Nag Nagasant. I, up in Massachusetts, I can't say that name. Fresh Catch. It's a um, refreshing gold nail, but Scotty loves the Eastern Shore of Maryland, so I figured the old lobster on there would make him happy. Not that they're there all the time, but you know what I mean. Come on on camera here, Scotty. All right, to all those working tonight, I should be at work tonight, but I am out sick one last day. Hopefully the doctor clears me tomorrow. Um, and then I can get back to normal. It's amazing how much you want to... Yeah, lips, I'm not going to the ER again, dude. Mm -mm. No, no more ER trips for me. So once again, to those working tonight, please be safe. To those who are working tomorrow, those who are just getting done their shifts, please be safe. Take care of each other, watch each other's backs. Never forget our fallen. Always take care of each other and uh, live life how they would want us to live it. Salancha, be safe, boys and girls. To use the, um, what was the movie? Old school, once it hits your lips. We'll see. I'm not sure if the stomach's going to handle that one. So I'll let Scotty finish <laughs> his beer. Um, like I said, uh, again, thank you. If you're in the area and you want to come on, come live, please let me know. Uh, I try to do it Sundays. I try to do it earlier than now, but I was running late. And uh, I, like I said, I got reading about Sardin Baddock, and it just, it stumped me. It, it just, it really did. I mean, to go back in the water a third time is amazing. So Absolutely crazy. All right, be good and be safe out there, boys and girls. Uh, everybody, love yous. Be safe. Be good. We're going to end it here. Uh, there will be, I will pull forward the videos over to YouTube if you want to go. Um, like I said, it's just this stuff. It's nothing fancy, but if you want to go to YouTube, same thing, Nolan's Poor House. And if I do get cleared tomorrow, I will pick a day this week. I will go live and show off some of the decals we have, some of this other crap we have, and uh, maybe a questions and answer thing, just to bring myself back to a normal realm. All right, love you all. Be safe. Be God good. Bless. God bless. Salancha. <laughs>